Hello everybody and welcome back to my kitchen, Budget Bakeness, produced by Ma Tang Do. Hey guys, oh, so excited to be here. I've been looking at different recipes and trying to come up with some fun ones to do that are a little less stressful, aka a big F you to Paul Hollywood. I'm just not in the right mental capacity to get there. Do you need help with the camera? No, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah keep going. Okay, you don't need to do close-ups until I have stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the lens cap is on. I've been into Bon Appetit's channel forever. I like love them. And so I was actually looking at some of the recipes that I thought would be fun to do that Moss would enjoy eating. And one of them is this salted caramel chocolate tart. And then I looked at it and guess who made it? The legend, the god herself, Claire Saffitz. You don't even know who that is. <sighs> spider? Is that another spider? We have two spiders. Let's get into it. I'm referencing the recipe on my phone. So first we're going to start off with the crust and in my bowl I already have flour, sugar, and a little bit of salt and I'm going to add in the cocoa powder and then Claire told me to whisk it so I'm going to do it. So now I'm going to add in an absolute fuck ton of cold cubed butter. And now we're just gonna get this all in here. And she had a wonderful note. You're gonna work with this a lot more than you would a pie dough. So as opposed to like a traditional pie dough that you want those like big chunks of butter to create those flakes, you really don't wanna see any chunks of butter in this one. So you can really work it in. So Claire said to make a well in the middle and to the well, I'm supposed to add my egg yolk, which already broke, but I think it's fine. And then three tablespoons of either chilled water or milk. And it's forming a dough. Amazing. Okay, now I can see you. Oh. We're having fun. Baking is fun, isn't it? You're not having a great time? No, it's just super intense. It, no, babe, remember? We're, we're going into the new year. It's not going to be intense. I'm going to be chill. I'm not going to be a perfectionist for being low key. It's real sticky. Oh, sh titties. Oh, this is the kind of thing when you make a mess, it just looks like poop streaks everywhere. So now this goes into, I almost said the oven. It goes into the fridge for about two hours until it's chilled. Two hours later. So I've pulled this out of the fridge, this one I made earlier that has been chilling for two hours. We gotta roll it out and put it into our fluted tin. And Claire referenced Mary Berry's fantastic tip of like sliding this under to transfer it. And I just love like icons acknowledging icons, ignoring the dumpster fire that is Paul Hollywood. If you watched my baking series called Baking It Easy on Tastemade, I have a lot of rolling pin tricks. To be honest, sometimes I just like ignore my own advice and then I regret it later. But one of the rolling pin tricks that I've learned is you only want to put pressure going away from you. You don't want to go back and forth like I was doing like two seconds earlier. Because you're stronger this way, you're not as strong this way. You just rotate it every time so it like maintains somewhat of a relatively even shape. And also you don't roll all the way to the edge because if you roll off the edge, you make it like slope down. You know? Handy Mary Berry trick told to us by Claire is she slides. Oh god, what was the next half of the tip? Fold the edges. Oh my god, wow, this is such a trick. Fold the edges of the dough inward toward the center, working all the way around so it rests on top of the pan bottom. Then lower the bottom of the tart pan in. My gosh! You know who couldn't come up with this tip? Paul fucking Hollywood. So now this just goes in here. Oh my gosh. Unfold the edges so they gently slump, nice word, against the sides of the tart pan and the excess dough is hanging off the edges. Press the dough firmly into the bottom pan with floured hands. Use a straight sided measuring cup to press into the grooves. Use a rolling pin to shed off the excess to press the dough. Tea 
bitch. Bone apple teeth. That looks fucking fire. Prick bottom of the dough all over with a fork and chill in freezer until very firm, 10 to 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes later. So I pulled this out of the freezer. It's chill now. Claire didn't tell me to do this. Maybe she did and I just didn't read it well enough. But when I'm using anything that has like a loose bottom, <laughs> I like to use a pan so then you don't accidentally, you know, grab it and do something weird. Now I'm supposed to put parchment paper for dry beans or pie weights. So now this goes into a 300 degree oven for I think she said 18 to 22 minutes. So let's do it. So now we are on to the filling and we're gonna bring sugar, cream of tartar, and a third of a cup of water to boil in a large saucepan over medium high heat or just medium, medium low. Good God. So my sugar is already in here. Add my water and my cream of tartar. This is just an eighth of a teaspoon. When this stuff happens and it's an eighth of a teaspoon and I'm lazy, I just kind of eyeball really not that much. Swirling pot often, but not over stirring. And we are making a salted caramel. Oh my God, how exciting, it's very different. Not how I make mine normally. Normally, I make mine cooking the sugar first without any water and like no cream of tartar. So let's see if, how different this is. I mean, I trust Claire more than I trust myself, so. So now we just, you know, kind of wait. How exciting. We are almost getting to the dark amber stage. It's taken, not gonna lie, it's taken fucking forever. How dark is dark amber? You know? You know what I think of now? Princess Amber. Princess Amber, the feminist. She is beloved by her people. She is beloved by her people! We should, you know where our next trip should be? Aldovia. If it's anything like Genovia, I think I'd love it. Yeah. Do you know what Genovia is? No. Princess of Genovia. I feel like this is almost dark amber, but like, is it medium amber? I just can't tell, you know? That's really dark. It's not that dark. Uh, it, that, that's the definition of dark amber. Okay, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> so now we're adding in. So now that that's all stirred in, it's supposed to add this. It's supposed to add this. This doesn't look good. It's looks really fucking liquidy. And then we add the salt. It's just so liquidy. But I think it probably does have to be softer than the one I usually make. I just keep telling that to myself. I'm going to pour this into a heat safe little jar. Oh, oh, okay. Maybe that's gonna be enough. So now I'm moving on to the ganache and I have a saucepan with water and then some semi-sweet chocolate in here. Claire says not to use above 70, so I didn't. And I'm going to add butter as well as heavy cream. And we're just gonna melt this until it's all nice and smooth. And then we have ganache. Melt fucking pasta. So our ganache is beautiful, chocolatey, clearly because it's fucking ganache, that's what it is. So now I'm going to put this aside to let it cool. It's really hot. No, you're not bad, okay. Ooh, that part's hot. So as you can see, my um, tart shell is not perfect. Uh, in the recipe, she says to patch any like cracks in between like the blind baking and then when you uncover it and you just let it bake. And I thought I had checked, but apparently some new ones were created. So I like tried to patch them um, and it just baked on top. So we're gonna deal, but now I'm pouring my chilled, well it's warm, but it's not so hot, caramel in. And now we just let this chill. It says it to cool for like an hour until the caramel is set. One hour later! So it is done chilling, it is out of the fridge. The ganache has reached this like thicker consistency. It's 
It's not as pretty as hers, but that's fine. And I'm gonna finish it off with some flaky fleur de sel. So as you can tell, it's nighttime. And I did read some reviews online that said once you cut into it, it's a little bit runny. So you kind of just like have to eat it a little bit quicker than that. So I think if I set it up a little bit more, that'll be better. So it's no time for you, but we're gonna come back in the morning. A fucking success, unless something happens in the middle of the night the next day. So guys, it is the next day. Please excuse my skin. I picked it. Please excuse my energy. I think I'm getting sick. But we are going to cut this. Have a taste test. Have a taste. Give us a squeeze. I feel like there's no way you're not gonna like it. Mmm, it's really good. There's a nice sound you're making, boy. Yeah, that's nice. The crust is so good. It's really good that how it didn't lose its uh, crunchiness. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's say you enjoy it. No, no, no. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there are other Bon Appetit recipes, especially like ones that Claire has done, desserts, that you want me to do, I would love to do them. And then if you have any other requests, just let me know. I will list the Bon Appetit recipe down below and I'll also have ow, it on my blog with pictures. And um, see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for helping film. Be, be nice. What? To him, if it doesn't turn out as well, you know? Oh, yeah. No, you guys can be mean. Okay. <laughs>